Hey guys, today we're talking about corporately owned life insurance. Super fun topic, neat way to save some taxes inside of your corporation, great way to protect any and all risk inside your corporation, and it's corporately paid. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisory Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. This is Adam Buss. He's a beauty. He's a really smart guy. We're thrilled to have you here, Adam. Thanks for having me, Rob. Yeah, a bit of a superstar. Uh, before we get into it, we do want to make sure that you take a second, give us a follow. Uh, we put out some great content. We'd love uh, to hear your thoughts, your comments. Uh, give us a share. And if you have any questions on anything investment related, insurance related, corporately owned insurance related, go to speaktorob.com. We'd love to hear from you and book a consultation. All right, Adam, corporately owned insurance. Where do we begin? Oh, well, first of all, who doesn't love talking about life insurance? Yeah. It doesn't get any more exciting of a topic as that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a variety of reasons that somebody may want to have corporately owned life insurance. Um, often we see, you know, buy sell agreements. Okay. A great way of kind of protecting the corporation for, for that would be using something like a, a term life insurance policy. Okay, so you and I are partners in a business. Yeah. Uh, we, we put a, a in our shareholder agreement, yes. there's an agreement where if I pass or if you pass, you're buying out my that shares. I'm going to buy your shares from you. Okay. So it's pre-agreed upon that this is what's going to happen. But I don't want to go to the bank and borrow, let's say, half a million dollars to buy out Rob from the corporation. Right. So I'm going to put life insurance on you. So if you pass away, that guarantees that there is cash in place for me to buy your shares. And then that money goes... To your estate, my to estate, whoever, to my family, yeah, whoever and that just means. comes out. That yeah. just comes out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It gives so, a guarantee that that is going to happen. It gives the liquidity. Your family has the peace of mind knowing that the cash is there for that transaction. Okay. So for that, I assume you'd have to factor in growth of the company, uh, and that would be like the corporation would pay for both of our policies. I understand. Absolutely. Yeah. It's much much more efficient if you have the corporation own the policies. It's paid with after-tax corporate dollars instead of after-tax personal dollars. As we all know, the corporate tax rate is a lot lower than the personal tax rate if you had to pay for that policy yourself. So we're chugging along, we're running our business. The corporation has a monthly expense or an annual expense yeah. for insurance, mm -hmm. but like you and I don't suffer as a result in our day-to-day -day salary or anything. Yeah. And if ever anything happens to me, heaven forbid, you get the company, you get ownership on it, and my family gets the wealth. Exactly. It's a neat way to structure something to protect ourselves and our interests because, you know, if, if there's no USA in place, maybe my wife now gets the shares or my partner or my estate gets the shares. Right. Maybe they don't know anything about our business. Yeah. It could be complicated. So that's very important to look at in the, in the shareholder agreement, I would imagine. Absolutely. It's okay. a key component. So that's one. So you could do a buy-sell agreement. What else yes. could, could insurance, corporately owned insurance cover? Well, a lot of corporations have, have debt within the corporations, whether it's buying real estate or operating loans, you know, it, it's nice to have that debt paid off in, in case of, you know, somebody passing away who's one of the key owners of the, of the corporation. Often banks require that the loans have adequate insurance coverage on it as well to give them the peace of mind that if the key employee, you know, let's say Rob, uh, passes away, that they're going to get their money to pay off that loan. Okay, so you're covering the debt much like you would like on a mortgage or, exactly. or you or I would on our personal debt. Yes. Okay, you're covering, you're covering the debt. Now what about uh, like key man insurance? You hear that term a lot. For sure, yeah. So key man is basically... Or key person, I guess. Key, key man, key person uh, is basically there to make sure that any lost income for that corporation could be replaced if that key individual was to pass away. There's also you know, such things as, as key person for critical illness or disability coverage. It's a way of the corporation protecting its earnings in the event that that key individual uh, passes away or experiences an unfortunate illness. So that would likely be for a corporation where there's potentially one or two individuals that are driving most of the revenue in the Correct, corporation. Yes. So like a trade perhaps, or like a consulting business where one individual is driving a lot of the revenue. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then you ensure the protection. That person is no longer to drive the revenue. You ensure that, and then the corporation still has the assets and the estate benefits from that. You bet. Okay. Uh, what about these tax planning strategies that I hear about where like it's, you're using corporate dollars to pay for a policy uh, to effectively protect some wealth long-term and to pull some money out of the corp effectively tax-free. Absolutely. It is a great strategy that we talk to clients pretty much almost every day about. 
which is using a whole life insurance policy owned by the corporation, paid for by the corporation. Again, it's paying for it with after-tax corporate dollars. And the idea is to try to get some of that cash out to the beneficiaries tax-free. Or maybe it's used to pay a tax liability on the, on the disposition of your corporate shares when you pass away, uh, you know, a large real estate tax liability again, uh, or you just have far too much money in your corporation, which is a good problem to have, but we want to try to get that out tax-free to your beneficiaries as much as possible. And whole life insurance is one of the best strategies to do that. Okay, so let's talk about that last scenario. You got too much money in your corp. Great problem to have, by the way. Super fun problem. So you got a ton of money in your corp. You're not going to be able to spend it all. You're in the kind of high net worth uh, ranking. You would consider yourself a high net worth. There's a lot of money built up in the corp, either through an operating company or a holding company. Mm -hmm. So you've made profits in your operating company. Maybe you've Maybe it's moved to the holding company, so now there's wealth that's accumulated there. You're never going to spend it. You got RSBs, you got tax-free savings accounts. Is that a situation where you could potentially consider a whole life policy? It's certainly something that we take a deep dive into every client's unique situation. Um, I want to address and see, okay, how much of this corporate cash is actually needed to fund your lifestyle over time? Is any of it earmarked for a uh, particular corporate project? Maybe the person wants to go and buy a, a new rental property in the near future. But we want to look at how much of that cash is surplus, it's just sitting there. Uh, you're having to pay tax every year on the investment growth. And we want to see, okay, how can we try to make that a bit more tax efficient moving forward? Okay. And we're basically going to take some of that corporate cash every year and basically shift it from pocket A to pocket B into a tax exempt life insurance policy where all of the growth is tax sheltered. Down the road, when you pass away, it pays out to the corporation. 100% tax-free, and then it pays out to the uh, beneficiaries of your estate through the CDA credit. The CDA would be the capital dividend account? Capital dividend account, which is a tax-free uh, amount that can come out of the corporation. So the corporation pays the insurance policy. Correct. I pass away, the corporation gets it tax-free. Yes. The million or two million or whatever it may yeah, be. absolutely. And then it also comes out of there completely tax-free through the CDA. Yes, so generally it is going to be completely tax-free. Uh, there may be a portion which is taxable, but you know it's very minor by comparison, and generally the tax savings is huge by comparison to not having the strategy put in place. So this would not be a situation, like we've done in some other videos, we've talked about protecting risk uh, through insurance. This would not be a situation where you're, you're trying to protect the risk. This would be a situation where you're trying to optimize your estate for you're wealth. optimizing your estate, you're optimizing your tax efficiency for your corporation, some people will use it as a tool to avoid the, um, the small business deduction, uh, the grind on the small business tax rates since they implemented the passive income changes. Any income generated within a life insurance policy does not apply towards the passive income. Oh, it's rules. exempt from it that is 50 exempt grand. from that rule. So. Okay, so the passive income grind, if you make more than 50 grand in your, your 50 grand of passive income annually in your corporation, your small business tax rate exemption gets grinded away, I guess, is correct, the way you yes. would say, and this income would exempt that. That's correct. Okay, so just another way to shelter income. All right, so we've talked about a whole bunch of different things, but we talked about protecting debt, we've talked about key person insurance, we've talked about the tax efficient strategies, we've talked about the buy-sell agreements. Anything else you can think of that would make sense for a corporate, uh, corporately owned policy? And I mean, I guess the key, I think if we're getting taken away of all this, is you're not paying this with after-tax dollars, right? Yeah, you're paying it with after-tax personal dollars, so it's maybe costing you, you know, 90 cents on the dollar instead of more because you know, you're using after-tax corporate dollars and you have a fantastic low corporate tax rate. The other thing we often look at is which corporation, if you have multiple, should these policies be owned within? And again, that's something we look at with our clients to make sure we find the right fit. So many times uh, we'll, we'll see a client, we'll meet a client, and the, the insurance is either not owned by the right corporation or, or it's being paid by the wrong corporation or it's owned personally when it should right. be owned corporately. Yeah. This is stuff that I feel is fairly high level and you, you, you probably need really, really, really good advice on this. So if that's something that's on your mind, make sure to speak, go to speaktorob.com uh, to get a, a free consultation with us. Adam, uh, I thank you for your time today. We looked at uh, a lot of really neat things. Um, I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'm head of the Tatro Wealth Advisor Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. I have today with me Adam Buss, Senior Wealth and Estate Planner here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. 
Give us a like, give us a follow, give us a share. If you have comments for us, we'd love to hear them from you. Please send them our way. And again, go to speaktorob.com if you'd like to have a chat with us. Thanks for tuning in.